give it to me. I want it. You might have noticed that what I was playing, we wasn't getting in the way of each other. Even though I was playing a lot, thumping. But Greg was playing around the beat. See, like right now what we're doing, notice this bass drum. We're kind of working together, right? We're going to show you this other song, Give It To Me, that we just played. And notice, instead of playing with me, he plays around me. You know what I'm saying? This is with me. We're going to show you how to get around me, you see? That's a big difference, you see? This is with me. And now we're going to show you how to play around me. Let's do that intro thing, you know what I'm saying? But we're gonna just do it just bass drum, okay? Just the beat, and you will just give you some bass drum and bass, okay? Here we go. Bang, uh.
questions on that? Flashback, man. Mm, I mean, some of the some of the, the, the old gigs, you know. When, what was your favorite gig? Oh man, you know, we had there was. Got to think back, think back. You know, Sly and the see. Family Stone, ladies and gentlemen, Sly and the Family. Stone. Well, you know what? You know what? Winchester Cathedral. Remember that? Oh, That's going way back. Now you take first back started. Now. Yeah, after hours, we used to play from eight Until. till one thirty. <laughs> And then play you know, till six in the morning from three, three. You to know six. what's good about that? It's that great, helped man. us get our chops together. Get our chops. You know, playing and playing and playing yeah. and playing and playing. And if we didn't uh, do the after hours, we rehearsed. Remember? I'm telling you, we rehearsed. You. That was it. That in was the, the thing that night. really helped tighten everything up. I was just telling someone that. Uh, yeah. Weeks ago, yeah. Like that. And that's what we try to encourage a lot of the young people to, you know, today to do. Yeah. Is you gotta play. You gotta yeah. get on your axe and play and play and play. And it takes a lot of time and energy. You gotta live it. Yeah. And it, it, to, to me, something that stands out in my mind, well, let me ask you, what, what, what was the biggest concert that stands out in your mind? I was gonna take well, mine, but uh, you know, I the biggest, I guess, would be, you know, as far as the sheer energy and the people and everything, it would be Woodstock. Okay. What, what was it yeah. about Woodstock, though, that took you out? Then I tell you what took me out. I mean, what was what what was highlighted in your mind about on the performance I mean, or the okay. or the or the experience? Yeah, well, both because I mean, okay, we had been to Winchester Cathedral, we yeah. did all the gigs and stuff. Right. Uh, we had did the first album, a whole new thing, and uh, we did uh, now dance to the music that was like you know big on the charts and stuff, mm -hmm. and you know all of these things, all the successful gigs, and now Woodstock. Woodstock. What was it that stuck out in your mind about Woodstock? And then I tell you what, you know. Well, the feeling, the the feeling, overwhelming feeling of the energy that was coming from the whole thing, you know, the musicians and the audience that were there. Right. It was really, yeah. Someone was asking me again. I was talking about this a couple of shows, an interview or something, and and I remember the. Uh, uh, it was really different because we played for near those size audiences before, like Isle of Wight, right, you know, right, different right. there was a lot of festivals back then. But there was nothing that, that had that, it really was a special thing. Yeah. It really was very unique. Yeah, and yeah. you know what, what tripped me out is that, you know how we used to always do those songs and we would, you know, and we would like segue into the next song. Right. You know, and we'd right. like one song into the next song into the next song. Right. And you never did know, you, you never knew what the, what the audience reaction was uh -huh. and when we played that last song and when we went off stage for the first time we could really hear the reaction yeah the roar of the, the roar audience was amazing. is like Wah! was that for you that was your yeah that was that a was rush for me yeah right because when we came back and played after the encore now with that feedback we went into a whole nother level you know and yeah. from that time on we knew there was a new zone we could tap into. I remember. I don't remember the the uh, the you know the wave coming back from when we stopped. I remember it from higher. The, yeah. Yeah. When we yeah. were higher, it was just everybody went. Higher. <laughs> you could hear. Higher. Higher. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That was And powerful. I think that that energy for Sly and the Family Stone was carried over into other songs. But yeah. I, I know that when I talked to a lot of drummers, like I talked just when we took a break a minute ago, right. and I asked him, I said, "Who's your favorite drummer?" And he said. Gregory Cole, some of those beats, you know. Yeah. And but the, what's interesting also that a lot of people might not know is that when Sly and the Family Stone started, I had been playing with my mother, she as um, she's playing right. piano, yeah. and we worked together for years, and it was working with her that I created the style, mm -hmm. right? Of thumping and plucking. And for a long time I didn't play with drums. So now here I come playing with a drummer, and it's like one thing that was beautiful 
is that we didn't clash. No. That's why we can play grooves like we was playing just now, mm -hmm. which is very syncopated or complicated, and we don't clash. We never really it's even talked about this stuff. Huh? We don't only connect here, here, right. we connect here, here. Yeah, exactly. One, two, three. Ah.
song is called Maria. Tet. It's my daughter's middle name, Latia Maria. And the reason I'm telling you that is because, see, sometimes when you write a song, you have to reflect on something that's beautiful in your life. So this song also makes me reflect on the beautiful island of Morea in Tahiti, you know what I'm saying? So that's how that became her name. Now, the thing about this song is that I'm playing lead bass on it, which is kind of unusual to take the lead with the bass. So I had to kind of like add a little color to the lead notes. For example, kind of like phase the sound and put a little delay on it because it like helps color the notes. Check it out. Hear the delay? But see, there's another part of the song too because it also goes into like another personality of Maria because there's more than just that side. So check out when it gets into this part. when you get to the funk, you know what I'm saying? You can't just, you can't just play like this. You can't do that, no, that, no. You have to kind of like slide it to make it funky, like. But check this out too. Now notice on the other song, Give It To Me, Greg and I were playing like, a syncopated thing, playing around each other. But now this time he's playing with me, we're walking together. So check out what Greg is playing with me, just bass and drums. So we walking together, all right? But now, when we played the other song with the syncopation, Butch had to play more sustained. Otherwise, if he was syncopation too, then we would like be getting in each other's way. But now on this song, he has freedom of movement because Greg and I are walking together. Watch what Butch does, okay? Watch the freedom that he has now. Give it to me, Butch. Ow. I can use that freedom. Ain't got freedom. Wow, I'm Bush got freedom. Wow. <laughs> Ain't got freedom. So remember that. If the bass and drums are locked in together, then the other instruments, your guitar player or your organ player, your keyboard player can have more freedom, okay? So that's how we put this together. But now when we get back to the pretty part, Notice Butch has to be more sustaining, okay, on the Morea part. Check it out. One, oh, uh. See, he has to be more sustaining like this to give me support while I play the lead.
Don't mind like I took a time and stop. was talking about that uh, before we came back in just now and he was saying how did he do that he was talking about the different flavors like that mm -hmm. and, the, and the other songs from the jam and I was trying to explain to him the, the, the makeup uh, of the group and what really made the group um, very successful with the different yeah, elements yeah B3 nothing like B3 nothing you know, uh, then the funk box, yeah, having the funk box, <laughs> off there, you know, um, you know, clavinet, you know, oh, playing the cl yeah, clavinet yeah, sound and stuff, yeah. and, and uh, you know, a lot of folks don't realize too that coming out of Sly and the Family Stone, when I put this group together, Hot Chocolate, to start recording, and I'll be the producer and writer, yeah. you was there. I was right, right there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The only thing was uh, I wasn't on base. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> and uh, I, I never forget that night at Bimbo's, you know, um, the club in San Francisco when uh, Hot Chocolate was playing and I came up there and, yeah. and set in for the last song and everybody kind of looked at each other and looked at the bass player that was playing uh, <laughs> previously and was like, I think you just lost your game. That's it. And for Graham Central Station, I think that uh, we had a very unique sound, um, uh, but to you, what, what do you think was one of the highlights uh, as far as gigs are concerned? What do you think? As far as you gigs? Flash, yeah. You flash wow, as far as gigs. You know, I, I, I look back, I like the orphanage. That, oh, yeah. that, that whole period of time, like when we were just doing, actually we were like, kind of like top 40 but we were doing our own material exactly. <laughs> all exactly. the stuff that we put you know that put together and it was like it was you know just with full of energy the yeah. cover tunes that we did it was like Graham central station flavor maybe your baby remember, remember we played human kindness day in washington dc DC, right with and, stevie, uh, stevie Wonder yeah, there. yeah and we had nerve enough to do a remake of his song <laughs> maybe your baby and he the liked nerve. It. yeah he liked and it he liked it he liked it <laughs> <laughs> he liked we, it. We was pretty yeah. bold. Yeah. But then it was what was fun. really cool about that when we played in, in at uh, Steve, what was the name of place? Steve something mall up in Boston. I remember when Stevie was there that night and it was on oh, radio. Yeah. And he came up on the stage and sung the song with yeah. us. Yeah. That, that, that was that was awesome. That was it. But the thing that of it is it. too, is that recently now, any any gigs stand out in your mind that we've played recently? Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, go over to Japan, you know. <laughs> okay, now I knew you were going to say that. You know, I mean, this is like, like the Blue Note. Uh, okay. Shoot. Uh, oh, I mean, it's, it's soccer, uh, Tokyo, uh, Nagoya, all these, pl I mean, it's like the way the energy that you get. I know, I know. You know, and everybody know. knows your stuff, too, you know. So, you, you know, you get to play what you play. Well, what what do you think what do you think people like about our band? What do you think people like about Graham Central Station? And what that that makes them get up and dance and boogie and jump and you know just really get into it. What do you think what do you think that is? Well, to me I think it's the rhythm, uh the energy, you know, mm -hmm. the the way it's been put together, you know, with the bottom uh uh you know, the the combination of how the foot works with the bass. You know, and it, one unique thing is how Herschel and I worked together in the yeah. group because, you know, when we started, it wasn't too many groups with two keyboard, two keyboard players. players right. <laughs> you know, exactly. they were usually clashing. Exactly. You know, but we had a thing to where Herschel kind of held down uh, uh, the clavinet and the synthesizers, and I held down, you know, the organ and the piano stuff, you know. Right, you right. know, which is, you know, a, a 
a gospel element that just kind of lend itself to, you know, to the sound, you know. I think when you just kind of like just look at the overall picture, when you take all those elements together, all the talent that the individuals possess, uh, the most important thing that I think that really held it all together was the love. That was it. Because the <laughs> one thing about it, the love that most we definitely. have for what we do is reflected yeah. in our music. Most definitely. And I mean, with that, you can just strike up any groove. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, uh. You know what I'm saying? Now you can tell he loves what he's doing, right? And I love what I'm doing, right? He put it all together. He called it heart music. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs>
So we like to explain about Thumper. Uh, basically, the song is called that because that's what it's about, the thumping. And if you notice, it's kind of like a rhythmic thing going on between the bass and drums. I'm using my uh, fuzz phaser, which mostly is in the phase mode. And uh, if I'm playing it like rhythmic, like drums, Greg can play along with me on that and make this like a, it's like a talking to each other drum wise, you know? One, two, three, oh. And the way I'm getting that effect is when I, when I have it in the down position, it's more like, and the more I raise my foot up, the more it opens up. It's kind of like talking. It's kind of like talking, you know what I'm saying? And then the other thing I was using is my jet phase, you know? <laughs> Now it's different from this because it's continuously moving the sound. With this, as I move my foot up and down, I change the sound. But here, once I step on the pedal, it continues to move the sound. So basically, I can get like a nice long sustain. Now as far as like the, the thumping action I was using, once I got through the pedal thing, I just got into straight up thumping, you know. But I can add some plucking in there too, you know. But now with all that that I'm playing, Greg has to be very careful of what he plays. Now notice what he's playing. Two, three, four. Now unlike the first song that we did, we noticed we was doing some things where we were kind of like a lot of syncopation. Now, because I'm playing so much, Greg has to more or less stay in the pocket to some degree. He has to more or less stay locked in. Okay, check it out again. Two, three, four. But now the key, the key is not only what you're seeing on top. Check out just the bass and the bass drum because that's the key, that, that's what's really locking in. Check out just the bass drum and the bass. One, two, three, four. You check that out, he going dum, dum. Play the bass drum by itself, Greg. Three, four. See, see how he's locked in? Now, Start that pattern and then I join in. You kind of see how I can get away with playing so much because he's locking in with that, with that right there. It sounds simple, but that little ta-da he puts in there really adds a lot. Go ahead, Greg. Now add your snare drum and the rest of the stuff with it. He's so locked in, I can even get real fancy, like. Now that's a lot, right? But it's not a lot if he stays locked in. Two, three, four. Now notice when we play on all that, check out what Butch has to play. One, two, three, four. He has to play fields. So if you put it all together, it's like this. One, two, three, four. There you have it. Thumper.
sure feels good to me. <laughs> You know, when I think back, it's really a blessing to have uh, been able to come up with a style of thumping and plucking and so forth that kind of all happened by accident, which you've learned in previous stories, uh, working with my mom, uh, her own piano, me on bass, and uh, then my style became popular through Sly and the Family Stone, and then later on more popular through Graham Central Station. But the thing of it is, is as I reflect on the fact that uh, it, was, it was a blessing to have been in such a group um, to play concerts like Woodstock, which Greg and I got a chance to talk about, uh, to be able to experience forming my own group, uh, Graham Central Station, and to have played a lot of the uh, things that uh, Butch and I were talking about and reflecting on earlier. And uh, so uh, today I'm really grateful that people like yourself like what I do. You like my music, you like my bass plan, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. And I'm also grateful that we got a chance to spend a little time together talking about my thumping and plucking, talking about uh, the various pedals that I use, uh, talking about the music that we play, how it's the syncopation, uh, you know, not clashing between the bass and the drums and the part the keyboards would play, uh, depending on what the, the bass and drums was doing. And, and I hope you really understood uh, what I was trying to tell you and demonstrate to you. But the bottom line is this, it has to come from the heart. You know, it's a lot of things that we can learn uh, from other people and learn from each other and I will continue to try to learn from you and try to share with you the gift that was given to me. But what we play, uh, it, it, it has to come from, from the heart and different groove, you know. You know, that's, that's, that's like from the heart, right? I mean... Uh, Heart, you know, stuff like that, you know, and it's not that it's so hard to play, so complicated, um, but if you kind of like feel it, you know, if you feel it, if you're happy with it, and you're projecting that feeling, then you're going to make the person that's listening to you feel it too, even if it's a slow groove. even something fast. It doesn't matter, you're gonna feel it, as long as it's from the heart. So listen, what we're gonna do is uh, just continue to do our best to give you what's coming from our heart. We're gonna continue to try to reach your heart. I'm definitely gonna try to do that with my music, with the bass, and uh, you know, Check out this whole thing, run it back a few times, listen to it a number of times, try to connect with what I'm trying to, to give you. Try to let it sink deep down in here. Don't just let this be an intellectual e exercise, you know what I'm saying? Don't just listen from the surface. Rewind this tape, play it back, and check it out because really, it's from the heart. Just want you to know I love you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you tired yet? <laughs> Well, I hope you're not. We're not either, but guess what? The tape is only so long, and uh, 
we have to kind of wind it up. So I guess you're gonna just have to hit the rewind button. You know what I mean? <laughs> but as far as we're concerned, we out of here. One, two, three.
I think we're having too, too much, much fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 